Just because I'm fat, that doesn't invalidate the things that I say. She died. You ready to get supersized? She died too. Today I've got the big fruit loop. <laughs> He's dead. Fat positive influencers are dying. So we all know the fat acceptance movement at this point. I sadly did not get a McChicken today. I was feeling like a burger girl. Here's one of the fat positive influencers named Brittany who promoted fat positivity on TikTok. And this was one of the last videos she posted before she died where she pretty much regretted everything. Here's a caption. I wish I could turn back time and have not stopped when it got hard, not given up when the grief hit me. That's life though. This has to be the final time I pick myself up off the ground because I'm scared I'm gonna end up in a very bad place that my body can't recover from and she was right. I ruined my life with food, um, binge eating, and lack of self-care. Um, and I'm hoping that it's not too late for me this time. Um, you know, I ain't been to the store in two years, maybe more now, I guess. Um, I went to the post office once and that was hard. I went to urgent care and I thought my legs were gonna give out from under me. This is the grim reality of what happens when you take part in fat positivity here. Now, I feel absolutely horrible for her. This is a, a situation that actually nobody wants to be in, but when you've been lied to by society th saying that addiction is completely okay, this is kind of the result, okay? When modern society tells you it's okay to be extremely obese to the point where you can't even walk and you should somehow be proud of that, you know? And if you dig into it a little bit deeper, you'll realize that they're just trying to make money from you. You know, saying that it's okay to be fat, you'll be eating shit tons of fast food, which nowadays we have like two McDonald's and one goddamn block. Like they'll tell you, you should be perfectly proud of giving into your addiction and eating anything you want. And then they'll sell you these random drugs and needles like Ozempic to magically make you feel better and magically create fat loss. But that's not really how it works. Anything meaningful in life is always behind a layer of hard work and discipline. Um, Cause I had to stand there the entire time after walking in you know I kept just looking back at the chair and just praying that I could just make it another second until she was done with me you know um I I can't even I couldn't even probably go check the mail right now between you know the the growth I have in my uh, fupa so not my apron but my pelvic region it's about 30, 40 pounds now. Oh um, I God. go in January to see what it is because apparently um, there has been a big misunderstanding where my doctor thought I was having issues with my apron. But no, it is the growth below that that I have to physically move when I walk. Listen guys, like a lot of people in modern society now, they put their health as the last priority, right? I gotta, I gotta work, I gotta make money, I gotta do all these other things. And then health is pushed to the very last one of them. Oh, I don't have time. But you only have one body and it's only a matter of time before some sort of permanent damage occurs to your body. And you can always make money later. You can always do everything else later. But once damage is done to your body, that is very, very, very hard to fix. So I'd always encourage everybody to focus Focus on their health first and foremost, right? Anytime I roll or move or anything, I have to adjust it. Um, and I can't wear my leggings or shorts anymore. <sighs> I'm out of breath constantly. You know, and I wish I knew the cost of eating. I wish I knew the cost of the, the comfort at the time that I was seeking. Um, and I just want this to be a warning to other people that just need to hear the hard truth, you know, that if you, <clears throat> if you keep it up and you keep, you know, gaining and not taking care of yourself and moving around and doing what you need to do, you know, your health is gonna decline. I I'm really proud of her for posting this video because despite the fact that she was actually part of this movement and promoting this sort of lifestyle, she's finally come to understand what sort of uh, consequences this has on other people. And them hearing it from another sort of fat positive influencer will do wonders way more than I could ever say because they'll probably just ignore me or something. I'm really proud of her for actually posting this. This is, is gonna help a lot of people. I do what I need to do, you know, to take care of my husband and stuff still and I make things work and I can do the things that I need to do but they're very very hard <laughs> you know I had to have help trimming my toenails the other day because I felt so out of breath trying to lean over and do my toes there's just a lot that is taken away from me 
And I want you to know that it's not worth it. It, it never is. It's not worth never your is. life. I really hope that I can turn it around this time because it's... It's really scary how bad things can get. It really is. I'm and it's it's never worth it. It's never worth to give in to your short-term desires for and sacrifice your long-term health there. And what people don't understand is you don't have to give up the foods you love. You don't have to give up everything nice in the world or something. In fact, you'll probably enjoy the food way more if you actually uh, go through that layer of discipline and understanding that, hey, there's times I can eat this, there's times I can and, uh, you know, if, if you have it in controlled amounts, it's like everybody's had that experience of eating McDonald's seven days in a row. And by the third day, you start you, you actually just hate it and you're just confused. Like, hey, I, I love McDonald's. Why do I suddenly hate it? Because you're having it over and over and over again. Right. That's kind of how it works there. And um, it might like temporarily satiate you or something. Obviously, it's going to taste better than, I don't know, normal chicken breast or whatever, which is not fried or whatever. But what about how it makes you feel after? You got to take into all these considerations. Rest in peace, Brittany. Thanks for your powerful message there. It's never too late. We can be your community. We can be with you every step of the way, sending you love. I'm almost 500 pounds and completely bed bound now. It's scary how bad my health has gotten. I want to make a change so bad. It's so hard. I wish you the best. And all you got to know is that there's millions and millions of people out here here with you in the same journey going through the same struggles and you can always reach out and ask people how they do it how they how they overcome this so sort of impossible seeming task you know i started this year at 576 i finally found a medication combo that works for me i'm currently at 523 it's rough listening to everything you are awesome progress i hope 2023 continues to be successful i hope you found what works for you so she's really uh seems like a good person over here i haven't seen the rest of her content but i just know from this video that she really means well you know there's this video that's sort of going viral as well basically showing all these fat positive influencers just dropping like flies essentially and it's really sad just because i'm fat that doesn't invalidate the things that i say she died you ready to get supersized she died too today i've got 37 hold up what Heart failure kills body positive activists at 37. It's just, there's a there's an innumerable amount of issues. Every single issue that a normal person has, like heart problems or potentially getting diseases and stuff, it is magnified times times 50, times 100 chance when you get to that size, you know? Today I've got the big fruit loop. <laughs> He's dead. Dead at 33. These All these people are dying so young as well. They had like such, so much more life to live. Imagine dying at 33, dude. You had, I don't know, what's the average lifespan? Like 80 or something. That's 47 years of your life that you've lost because you succumbed to short-term gratification there, you know? Join me on my fat positive radio show. Which didn't last long because she died. That's... That's ridiculous. Oh boy. Personal health is of the utmost importance. A very simple concept to adhere to. Moderate hand to mouth, increased feet to ground. Being lazy makes for an easy habit. Being obese makes for a difficult life. The problems that come with not being uh, fit pretty much outweigh everything. It'll affect every single aspect of your life. It'll make you tired. It'll make you less productive in your work. It'll make you emotional. It'll make you lash out at people, affect your relationships. So that's the, your mind and body are connected. You know, you gotta, gotta stay on top of that. The one body you should be positive about is a healthy one. Your body is God's temple. Treat it accordingly. And honestly, like, it doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter if you start at 1,000 pounds or if you start at 100 pounds, okay? It's all about actually getting on the journey and taking that first step to making your life uh, better, you know? Here we have another article with just a morbid headline. These four social media influencers were swept up by a movement that claims obesity is perfectly healthy. The tragic truth is they all died under the age of 45. A well-known activist, professor of fat studies. The fact that there is a professor of fat studies just shows where society is at. There's no, nothing to study there. Dr. Kat Paws, who questioned the links between weight and health, lost her life aged 42. Based in Massey University in New Zealand, she also presented a fat positive radio show. Uh, what can I say? Your life's work was literally just inspiring other people to become like you and essentially just promoting uh, promoting them to harm themselves. And the worst part about all these situations is that these people think they're actually doing a good thing here. They think they're being the nice ones here. When in reality, the people that are mean or whatever, the people that are actually telling you the truth are actually the nice ones in the situation because they're saving you from dying at age flipping 42. Jamie Lopez, who starred in US reality TV show, Super Size Salon, died from heart complications age 37 last December. And there's always gonna be people willing to exploit these sort 
sort of situations and all these TV shows and stuff like that to p put these people in the spotlight, give them all this brand deals or whatever. I I'm not going to be surprised if JB, the woman we covered uh, asking for free extra airline seats, is going to die in the next few years either because there she, sa she shows no signs of stopping. She wants the entire world to change for her. And you know she's suffering. Nobody at that size can have a healthy and fulfilled life, you know? Classic Cosmopolitan magazine here. This is healthy. This is healthy. No, it's not. No, it's not. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys start off 2024 of getting your health goals on track. Eat healthy, exercise, and make, make everybody around you proud, you know?